Stories of resurrections abound in nearly all religions, past and present. Stories about not only humans coming back from the dead, but the gods as well. That a god could die is strong evidence that the early humans anthropomorphized their deities, giving them human attributes, such as human bodies, human emotions, the ability to mate with humans, and even suffer death. Gods and humans dying and making their way to Hades, Sheol, Hell, or whatever name you'd like to use for the residence of those no longer with us. But somehow, some of them find their way back and live again. Since the idea of returning from death seems fairly ubiquitous across time, place, and culture, it may seem that this helps corroborate Jesus' own resurrection. Some might say, you see, all of this was just a foreshadowing of Jesus' true resurrection. But what's more likely, that every resurrection story of history is true, or that at least some of them are myths? And if some of them are false, which ones? And how likely is it that every resurrection story ever told throughout history is false, and the story of Jesus' resurrection is the only true account. Could it be that the correct answer is that all of them are false? Someone might counter by saying that we have no way to know for sure that all of those claims are myths since we can't go back in time to verify them, including the resurrection of Jesus. Maybe some of them did occur, but again, it's a matter of probability. What's more likely? That all or even some of the stories are true? That Osiris was chopped into pieces yet reassembled with no ill effect? That is, if you grant that there was an Osiris. Did a dead person really come in contact with the dusty bones of Elisha? And somehow that contact was able to bring the person back from the land of the dead? Isn't it more likely that these stories fall into two basic categories, one being fiction designed to make the reader go, ooh, and two, being mere honest mistakes and ignorance about human physiology and so on. And the common denominator in all of them seems to be our understanding that death is truly final. Doesn't it make more sense to believe that someone fell into a short coma for a few days and later awoke, than that they actually died and somehow overcame several days of decomposition and then came back to life with no lasting ill effects? Could it be that death wasn't completely understood in ancient times? Is it possible that the seasons were not merely symbolic of life, death, and rebirth, but that the ancients believed the plants truly died and were resurrected? And is it possible that the ancients would extrapolate this mystery onto human life and death. If a tree could come back to life again, after being dead, why not a person? Something with more innate value than a tree. Why would God allow a tree to resurrect and not the pinnacle of his creation? And what about the crushing finality of death? Humans are problem solvers. This problem was solved with the invention of an afterlife. Emotionally, death was simply too great for ancient mankind to accept. That the sun, earth, and plants lived on, but not the very center of God's creation? Certainly, that could not be the case. A loved one falls never to move again and quickly rots away into nothing but a pile of bones? The idea of an afterlife, a soul that carried on, a future resurrection, was inevitable. It's a known fact that people were often presumed dead when they were merely in a death-like state. And sometimes these people were buried prematurely because for all appearances, they were dead. Here is a picture of a burial vault built around the year 1890. Notice the two open vaults and the internal escape hatches. 
quite useful should one awake to find herself buried alive. Until the last hundred years or so, people had no way to know that the appearance of death might not always be death. If we couldn't know it as late as 1890, people living thousands of years ago couldn't know it either and would naturally believe that coming back from the dead was, if not a frequent occurrence, at least a possibility. These pseudo-deaths, which resulted in apparent resurrections, would have looked like the real deal 2,000 years ago in ancient Palestine and around the world. But there simply is no good evidence that anyone ever came back from being truly dead, divine intervention or not. While there is abundant evidence that people have returned from a death-like state, a drowning victim is resuscitated. Someone who sustained trauma to the head comes back to consciousness. Someone in a short coma wakes up. Or perhaps someone lost in the snow was found and assumed dead, but recovered. Or what about someone who was hanged, cut down only to walk away with nothing more than a sore neck? These events would have given the appearance of resurrection, even though the people in question were not dead. And over time, a belief that people could come back from the dead would have naturally been reinforced. Take this story, for example. A young man in Nigeria is involved in an accident, shows all the outward signs of death, is examined by a doctor, pronounced dead, and is in a coffin awaiting burial when he suddenly begins to breathe and eventually he revives. The obvious question, was he truly dead? Was his heart truly stopped? Or did the doctor simply not have the tools to see that he wasn't dead? Did he use an electrocardiogram or just his fingers on the wrist? Did he draw any blood to test the blood pH level? Did he measure brain activity? I think we all know the answer to those questions. Although those poor people in Africa knew almost nothing about the intricacies of human physiology, even laymen like myself likely know more. The body can become death-like and still be alive. As long as there is some blood flow, as long as the brain cells do not die off, the person is still alive. But the sad news is there are people today, not just in third world underdeveloped countries, but in industrialized, modern countries that claim resurrections are happening all the time. I want to talk to you just for a few moments today about raising the dead. It's a reality that's happening all over the world today in increasing uh, momentum and numbers. Many people are being raised from the dead all over uh, the United States and the third world countries all around the world. It's a very exciting raising day. Raising the dead has living. always been a mandate of the church. Jesus commissioned us to go in his name and preach the good news of the kingdom, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out devils, to, to cleanse lepers. The 13th resurrection from the dead! No, hold on. I don't think I heard you. People like this should know better. But isn't it odd that of the countless billions of people who die in hospitals, there is not one verifiable case of a person being truly dead with no pulse and no brain activity for at least several hours, yet later coming back to life again? Where are these resurrections everyone is claiming? Apparently, God is happy to raise uneducated natives in jungles up from the dead but he prefers to avoid areas of high literacy population and medical technology, such as New York, LA, Toronto, Beijing, Bombay, Copenhagen, Tokyo, and the list goes on and on. Is it a mere coincidence that these claims of resurrection are almost always happening in areas that match the education levels of those 2,000 years ago? But one of the most sickening videos I've seen in a while is this one. It's the dreaded Jesus camp. And in this scene, the children learn how to raise someone from the dead. 
And then I'm going to call another person up here, and they're going to raise that person from the dead. How about that? Who wants to be the dead person? Who wants to be the dead person? Would you like to be the dead person? You come on up here. You might want to move my water again. Sweetheart, you come up here, and you lay down right there, and you're going to be dead. Justine, oh, everyone cry. Justine is dead. Lay down, Justine. You've got to lay down. You've got to lay down. Lay down on the floor. Lay down on the floor. Lay back, baby. Oh, everyone cry. the same sinking feeling in my stomach watching that clip as I do hearing a news story about animal abuse. But let's see if we can wrap this series up now. Everything we can lay on the table points to the inevitable conclusion that the evidence for Jesus' resurrection consists of theologically motivated fiction theologically motivated interpolations of that fiction. Old Testament passages reinterpreted and jerked completely out of context. Myths cited to prove other myths, and so on. In the specific case of the Gospels, we have fiction founded upon fiction. Fiction deliberately designed to further the religious beliefs of each individual author fables fashioned to evoke emotions in the reader fables which grew with the telling from mark to luke and beyond when you consider the apocryphal writings of the second century if there is any truth at all to the jesus story we can't be at all sure just what that truth is was he a traveling teacher of righteousness trying to usher in a new ideology was he in fact a divine being fathered by the Jewish God Yahweh? Did he perform countless miracles in front of thousands of people? Did a deity raise him from the dead? Did he exist at all? 
One thing we can be sure of, there simply isn't enough evidence to support the claim that a man named Jesus came back from the dead. But at the same time, there are mountains of evidence which all point toward the conclusion that the story of Jesus is a mere myth. It's been said before, and I'll repeat it here, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And in this case, we don't even have ordinary evidence of Jesus' resurrection. If the resurrection of Jesus is to be believed based merely upon the contradictory fiction of ancient writers who believed in birds who turned into flying worms, or that the sun and stars orbited the earth, or that the color of goat hair could be influenced by putting striped sticks in front of mating goats and so on, and who felt no hesitation at all about writing fictional elements into their accounts, then we might as well believe every other claim of resurrection that was jotted down in writing. For the evidence supporting those claims carries precisely the same weight.